So this is the uh, most recent update of my QUBD uh, printer. I've uh, kind of got this dialed in a bit and I just received my end stops that I ordered from China. They took about a month. And uh, decided I was going to go around and try to figure out what made the most sense for putting on the end stops for this thing. Because I'll tell you, that's the one thing on my uh, Perusa i3 from Folger Tech that I like the most is the ability to kind of do its own home. It pretty much bites to have to manually home this particular printer every time. Um, and I was getting a lot of inconsistent printing just because my process for leveling it or zeroing it wasn't good enough. So, um, if you go on Thingiverse, you will find that there's a kit of parts or a zip folder of parts for this thing for its end stops and for the most part they are pretty darn good. Um, let me get the print head out of the way a little bit. Um, I certainly like the uh, end stop holder for the z-axis and end stop holder for the Y axis. These are great. Um, pretty solid. The uh, Y axis um, has a nice uh, the ability to be adjusted down here. Now there was this bracket thing that came in this particular kit of parts that I uh, downloaded and tried to print off. But thing was is it was designed for the original um, I think it was original um, X X carriage or X axis X gantry there we go so um, it, it, it wouldn't mount to this um, printed upgraded X gantry here the uh, it, it, the the screw holes for mounting aren't exposed because it would mount it on to the opposite two exposed screw heads. Um, it would mount on uh, this side over here, which basically has the uh, the Acme uh, screw in the way, and even to flip it backwards, it wouldn't work. So. What I had to do is I had to make a little bracket. That was fun. That was actually my first print of something that I created myself. Thank you, Vectorworks, and the CAD drawings I can do. Um, so I made that so that it would work with this particular X gantry. And then for the X end stop, although having adjustable end stops is really nice, it's really not necessary for the X because you kind of want your maximum travel anyway. Um, so I just screwed it right to the gantry, you know, just directly right to it there, and it's pretty solid, which is nice. I did um, do some small little drilling of holes underneath to accommodate the uh, solder tabs for the, um, it's actually for the micro switch specifically, because those are through soldered. So that sits nice and flat. Um, the the Y and X or excuse me the Y and Z end stops these are pretty solid I, I like these a lot and then certainly this it's screwed it's solid uh, I can't say that I'm displeased with my design of of this little bracket um, it's certainly serving its purpose I would like to get a longer screw because at the moment I've made this little extension thing and there's no need for that once I get a longer screw. Um, other things that have been done to this printer since the last time I uh, posted a video, I reprinted uh, the fan or air diverter, if you will, or air channel for the hot end. I did find, or I had to buy a new fan. Turns out the fan I had that I knew worked didn't work. Surprise, surprise. Um, it had a short, so it was intermittent. So I got some new fans. Um, printed a little, you know, fan cover. Nothing too crazy. Um, about the last thing that I think I want to do to this thing, at least I think, 
Uh, there was this great design for little nut holders for the um, for the the bed, so that you if you unscrewed it too far, the nut wouldn't go anywhere. Just kind of hold it in place, and they clipped on. And that was really great, except the file that it was that was made for these didn't accept the size of nuts that are on here. I think these are six millimeter nuts, and that's an three or an M3 bolt. So something was a mismatch. So who knows, maybe I'll try to take on more uh, original designing. Wouldn't that be fun? Otherwise this thing works pretty good. Um, there's still a little bit of slant in the uh, x-axis just because it's only supported by one side. Again, that Acme screw. So you just tighten your, your, um, your bed down on the side that it would be sloping on and try to kind of accommodate for that. It's not the end of the world. Um, I am discovering now, the more and more I use this, that the extruder that uh, that I printed, I probably should print another one or look for another design. Even though this one's pretty good, what I have found is it doesn't allow for easy switching of filament because the mount for the hot end is a little off the center. So if you push the filament straight down and in, you kind of just run to the bottom. You kind of have to use the curve of the filament and get it to kind of curve around and hook in it. But once it's in, it seems to work pretty good. You do have to leave the uh, fan on until the hot end's cool, though. Otherwise, enough heat does go up into it to uh, warp the filament enough so that it won't extrude for the next print. Um, did some more cable management. I like somewhat nice cables even though there's a little spaghetti back there it's far far away from all the moving parts so I could care less about that um, thinking about it um, thinking about getting a uh, LCD screen for this I'm, I'm, I'm torn because they're about 60 bucks for this particular one whereas for my um, my i3 over there that's that was you know thirteen dollars so I don't know 55 seems like a lot but what do you do uh, another option I've seen some people try to figure out the pinouts of the printer board and they've done their own um, can't made their own LCDs kind of work with it I do have an LCD screen available to me no cost, which is kind of nice, but it's not the most used one like this. It's actually much, much larger, wider, and has more interfacing pins, so uh, it, it might not be worth the hassle. But, you know, this printer does have the ability to print on its own once you load a file to it. It does have the little micro SD card on the, the printer board. So you could load it, start it, and unplug it, and it'll keep printing, which, you know, that can be nice. Certainly if, you know, you're on a laptop or something and going to lose power. Well, if you're on a laptop, I suppose this thing would be plugged in, so you're close to an outlet. But uh, you could take your laptop with you and go run, else, run off elsewhere, and this thing will still be printing. Um, what else? What else? Um, had to, I was losing steps after doing lar larger prints on this thing. Turns out uh, I had to put a fan, a cooling fan, on the printer board itself. I have some heat sinks for the uh, uh, stepper drivers coming. That should help. Uh, but there's a 80 millimeter fan kind of zip tied back there. Let's see if you can see it. Nope. Ta-da! Fan. Um, what else? Oh! <laughs> Just a little, uh, I don't know, let's call it 3D printer hacking, why not? Uh, if you want to hack, or start over, if you want to make a cheap filament or spool holder, I know everybody loves printing these things out, I even printed one out for my first printer. Um, there's no real great printer spool holder mount location on this this QUBD printer. It's, it's too wobbly, it's too too fragile. Couldn't mount it up you know up top here. That just wouldn't work. 
So I got a little trash can from the dollar store. Um, I put two holes in it, right towards the middle, right towards the top. And I have plenty of play um, for a spool to go through. And I do have my uh, bushing, my spool bushing in there to accommodate the large hold spool. It works great. Uh, again, not the classiest thing in the world, but it works great. It also gets it up a little higher so that it just kind of does a little uh, 90 degree bend and then right into the extruder. So if you're looking for a cheap way to get your spool in, in a, a way where it can unreal itself rather than just letting it sit on the desk or something, that's certainly the way to do it. I actually even had that smooth rod left over from the Perusa build. Uh, it's just wide enough that it, you know, spanned the trash can. So one dollar spool holder, not too bad. Didn't even take any printing time, at least not on on the holder itself. The bushings are another story. Uh, gosh, what else, what else? I think that's about it. Um, not a bad little printer once you do all the work to it. Um, basically the only thing left is just the lower half. All this black down here, everything above it, short of the, uh, uh this little, I guess this would be a linear rod, um, connector. This little piece of wood up here. Whole X gantry reprinted, all the end stop locations printed for the first time, bearing guide printed, extruder printed, uh, X carriage printed, fan uh, air diverter and, and fan guard printed. Um, gosh, what else? That's about it at the moment. Um, like I said, I would like to make some things that will hold the nuts for the, the bed. I also wouldn't mind considering looking at a way to more securely anchor the linear bearings on the y axis um, to prevent a little bit of this. I know I'm going to get some of that, but maybe I can make that a little bit more rigid by getting some kind of clamp or something that will go over the top um, to set the zip ties. Otherwise, this thing's pretty good. I'm actually going to be taking it into work, work at a university. Um, so, I'll, uh, I'll have this available to play with there. Because um, you only need one printer in one area at one time, I think. Who knows, though? I might be getting another one before I know it. Uh, so, signing off for now, guys. Um, if you're free to shoot questions, I'll try to answer them. I've been doing pretty good about that. Uh, I, oh, I did get one person asked, well, Choosing between the two printers, what would I recommend for a beginner? I would say go with the Prusa still, the i3. You got more stuff, and it's a little bit more solid than the QBD. And again, that kit was under 350. This one is 280 before shipping. If you bought it new from QBD, difference of 70 bucks more or less I'd go with that one you know, you're getting a hot um, a heated bed you're getting a little bit more accurate lower profile hot end e-stops come with that one by default um, yeah I mean without a printer you know I couldn't even make well it might have worked but I wouldn't be able to do all the upgrades and things I did to it already. So I would say still go with the Prusa if you get the opportunity. Um, but if you have time to tinker, if you have another printer and can print parts for this one, why not? You know, that's why I got it to tinker on. I might keep going with it. I might put a heated bed on it, but then I have to get a different power supply, I think. Or I should get a different power supply because that's only 100 watt. Hmm. Goodness. Um, I think that's about it. Yep, I think that's about it. So, signing off for now. You guys have a good one.